Hey guys and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA and after many, many failed attempts, we are finally at Carbone, one of the most famous and exclusive restaurants in all of New York City, which is saying a lot in New York. Now we've been trying to get into Carbone for months, maybe even half a year at this point. For a while we tried to walk in and they turned us away at the door, even though we emailed them and they said they take walk-ins, but you show up and they say that, but then they don't actually allow walk-ins in reality because it's always fully booked, even for lunch on a weekday. Now the way most people get in is you make a reservation. Their reservations are released one month in advance, but I don't know how. Like once they release, they're already fully booked for the whole month, like pretty much immediately. So what did I do? I just pretty much just kept refreshing their reservation page and eventually I was able to get an appointment at 11.45 on a Wednesday. So I pounced on it. And another thing too, despite all the work it took to get a reservation here, they still didn't have room for us inside the restaurant. We're in like their spillover outdoor space. Although I don't necessarily mind that. I mean, it is quite beautiful inside but they did a great job decorating this outdoor space. It still looks quite nice and sophisticated <laughs> until you peek to the left and see that, you know, this pretty cheap plastic divider is separating you, which kind of kills the vibe a little bit. So just don't look outside. Now, after such a long wait and all the hype, my expectations are pretty high for this place. This place was once regarded as one of the best restaurants in the city. It held a Michelin star for many years, but to be honest though, about a year ago, they actually lost their Michelin star. Them and Peter Luger, they lost their Michelin star together in 2022. But despite the loss of their star, the place is still completely packed. Lunch and dinner, seven days a week, and you gotta book a month in advance, and if you're lucky, a space will open up. So, let's see if this place is worth the hype. Let's take a look at the Carbone menu. Now, I just want to show you, their menu is huge. Just look at it. Look at it compared to this table. It's like almost as wide as the whole table. A huge paper menu. But when you open it, it's actually much more sparse than it looks. It's mostly big in size, less big in terms of offerings. With such a limited menu, I would think that everything here is pretty good because less items mean that they can focus more on quality as opposed to like a diner, where a diner has lots of selections, but you know, everything is mediocre as opposed to a few items being great. But I'm sure everything here is good. Still, we're here, you know, we gotta make sure we get the hits and not experiment too much. Now there's spicy rigatoni vodka is famous so we gotta get that so we're gonna get a spicy rigatoni vodka their meatballs being boxed and highlighted are also one of their signature items so we're gonna get a meatballs as well and lastly i'm actually here with tina today and tina loves mushroom pasta so we're gonna try the fettuccine con funky the mushroom pasta so let's order so we're gonna do the uh spicy rigatoni vodka that's what's famous here right uh, and i hear the meatballs, meatballs are pretty famous okay as well and then... rigatoni and meatballs are all together like a very close friend okay can't wait like mario and luigi yes uh, <laughs> that's true and then the fettuccine con fungi and uh yeah and then that should be it so it's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes is that oh, right? no worries that's fine and there is any allergies to uh, Shellfish. Anything else? Ah, that's it. Sorry, I can't believe I made a Mario and Luigi joke at an Italian restaurant. So, sorry about that. But now, let's wait for our food. Yeah, how's it going? Thank you, this is fresh mozzarella. And do you just eat this straight up? Yeah. Okay. You can put it with the bread, combine it with the salami. A lot of people make sandwiches out of it. <laughs> Sounds good, thanks. Enjoy, guys. Now, these are their legendary apps. A fresh mozzarella made in-house, I believe. Some garlic bread. But let's try this fresh mozzarella, why don't we? Which a lot of people say that even though this is a free app, some people say that this is actually the star of the show. Oh man, hard to remove though. There you go. All right, the famous Carbone mozzarella in olive oil. Let's try a bite of this. Oh, 
Oh wow, wow, I gotta say, that is some amazing mozzarella, wow. It is just so fresh, it's definitely made in house. It just tastes so fresh that I don't even think it's a great mozzarella they're importing from Italy. It just tastes so fresh. Oh, and there's the meatballs. Wow, thank you. All right, now this is a Michelin star place or former Michelin star place. So service is top notch and the food came out really, really fast. Here we got their famous legendary Mario meatballs. This is a mushroom pasta fettuccine al fungi. I'm gonna call this Luigi's Linguini. And this is the famous spicy rigatoni vodka. Gotta eat all this. And I gotta say, everything looks good. I mean, I mean, these are your standard Italian American recipes, but somehow they just kind of look a little bit more elevated and higher quality. Like everyone's had meatballs and tomato sauce before, but the presentation, the freshness, it just looks better. I don't know, I'm getting excited. The mushroom pasta, eh, this one looks a little bit more average. Uh, not that it's not gonna be good, but this doesn't seem to pop as much. So let's try their signature dishes first while they're still hot. Let's finish this mozzarella real quick. We can't let this go to waste. Mmm. I'm just gonna say that was the best mozzarella I've ever had. I haven't been to Italy yet. Maybe if I make the trip someday, I might stand corrected, but in the US so far, best mozzarella I've ever had. All right, I guess first off, let's try this spicy rigatoni vodka. Just make sure we get sufficient sauce. You know, usually it's my instinct to eat this with a fork, but uh, I kind of don't want to lose any of this sauce, so we're gonna break with my rigatoni tradition and we're gonna use a spoon. Hmm. Let's try another piece. Hmm. Okay, so I mean, it's it's not bad. I mean, vodka sauce, pasta is always gonna be great. It's always gonna be comfort food and creamy and delicious. But to be honest, I was kind of looking forward to that. And this pasta just has like a really beautiful shine to it. Like the way it looks on a plate is just really breathtaking, even though it's very simple. Like I love the way that it shines. It must be like that extra drizzle of olive oil on top for presentation and flavor. But to be honest, uh, not only do I not think this is that special, I don't even think this is the best spicy rigatoni vodka I've had, to be honest. I usually love this dish, and I would even say even the local Italian restaurant in my neighborhood is better than this, I would say. Like, this definitely looks visually striking. Like, I love the shine, and it looks very decadent, and, you know, Michelin Guide is gonna love its presentation, despite how simple it is. But the flavor, eh, I mean, I find it a bit average, and I don't even think it's just based on expectations. I just find, like, the sauce could be a little bit more creamy. Like, as you can see here, it is a little bit watery. Like, it's not quite as thick as I am accustomed to. The noodles, I mean, I'm not saying they have to hand make all their noodles, but these noodles are just your very average boxed pasta noodles. There are good dry pastas, but this is not one of the better dry pastas that's imported from Italy. Or even if it is from Italy, it's one of the lesser good brands. So their signature dish, their spicy rigatoni, I uh, gotta say a bit of a letdown. But let's move on next to the meatballs. The Mario meatballs. Okay, a nice juicy succulent meatball. Cut a piece of this. Yeah, let's see. Looks really appetizing and fluffy and juicy on the inside. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, this meatball is excellent, I gotta say. It's very, very tasty. They really have the ratios down in this meatball. Like, not only do they look beautiful and the sauce has a nice shine, they also really have the ratios down here. Like, the breadcrumb ratio, which really is essential to making the meatballs nice and spongy and moist if you add milky breadcrumbs inside. I also believe that these meatballs are not just beef, not just beef and veal, 
I believe they also have sausage in this, pork sausage, and it really adds like a complex flavor, a bit of a spice, smoky, like nitrate -y flavor. It almost tastes like a sausage stuffed meatball. You know what, let's try with more sauce, see if that sauce takes it to the next level. The sauce is good. The sauce tastes like a really fresh tomato sauce. From the taste of it, I kind of get the sense that they're using fresh tomatoes and not canned tomato because it kind of lacks that canned taste. Like, you know, that slightly off-putting taste you get from canned tomatoes. And the fact that they're not overly sweet means that they didn't have to add sugar to offset that canned taste. But the sauce is not too special to me. Like, I feel like it just kind of tastes like a very average tomato sauce, maybe even below average, depending on the Italian restaurant. So if you eat these meatballs, I prefer to eat them more dry. Like the sauce is almost more like a garnish or like a plating technique. Like you don't really need to eat the meatball with sauce. Just eat it dry and it's going to taste better because it won't cover up all that sausage, veal, and beef flavor. Okay, lastly, let's try the fettuccine al fungi, the mushroom pasta. Get an extra piece of mushroom there. Or I don't think that's mushroom. I think that's like... Oh, no, it's mushroom. I thought it was celery for a second. The mushroom pasta is disappointing as well. I would say this isn't really too special. I mean, once again, similar to the rigatoni, these noodles are relatively low quality. Like they're definitely from a box and not fresh made. I feel like for this kind of dish, you really want to go with fresh made pasta if you can. But if you can't use fresh made, you gotta at least use a better brand. Uh, they taste very cheap and like they're from a box. The mushrooms don't really have too much flavor and they're kind of under seasoned as well. They're very bland. They're sliced a little bit too thin to the point where I didn't even know this was a mushroom at first. It kind of almost looks like a bamboo shoot that you find in like ramen or something. So they're a little bit too thin and they're bland and under seasoned and rubbery and not charred and kind of unappetizing. But the most disappointing thing of all is that this whole dish, it kind of doesn't really taste like when you eat other mushroom pastas, you really taste like the mushroom flavor is infused into the whole pasta, into the whole sauce. But with this dish, it kind of just tastes like you're eating some, you know, buttered noodles. And then with some mushrooms just kind of thrown on top of it. Like the mushroom flavor doesn't really come through in the pasta and in the sauce. It's like you just kind of eat some plain buttered noodles, like your typical mom's recipe buttered noodles for five-year-olds. And they just kind of threw some mushrooms on top and called it mushroom pasta. So a little bit disappointing. I mean, I get that this isn't one of their star dishes, but if it's mediocre, they should just not have it on their menu. So that's disappointing. Before we conclude the review though, the food came so fast, we didn't get a chance yet to try the bread. So let's try the appetizer bread. Mmm. 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 Oh, this garlic bread is amazing. The crispiness on it, the char is just perfect. Like you get crispy bits the whole end without it feeling dried out. The garlic butter is great as well and it's got some seasoning as well. And it's good quality bread. Let's try some of the cured meat. Mmm, very good. Uh, not outstanding, but it does taste good. But let's try one thing. Now the waiter told me that this is a common strategy, oops, for eating the apps. You know, except for the fact that the cheese is way too big. It's a bit too much cheese, but just slice that cheese in half, reduce the cheese ratio, and that's actually pretty solid. Anyways, we're gonna finish our lunch, and then uh, I'm gonna go outside for some final thoughts. All right, guys, so we just finished our lunch, and we're outside now, and I wanted to share some final thoughts before ending the video, but to be honest, I didn't think Carbone was that great. Now, I wanna focus on the pros first. The service was great. I can see why it was a Michelin star restaurant, and the atmosphere 
really, really nice. Even in that makeshift outdoor space, it was still nice and it was a nice atmosphere regardless of the makeshift space. That being said though, I feel like if I had just walked into this restaurant, aside from like the atmosphere and service, I felt like the food was pretty average for the most part. Now there were a few hits. The mozzarella was indeed really, really good. Probably the best mozzarella I've ever had in my life so far. The meatballs were also good, at least the meatballs themselves. The sauce was eh, kind of an afterthought, but everything else was generally disappointing. The spicy rigatoni vodka, eh, I mean, it was their signature dish, but there wasn't really anything special about it. Nothing really stood out. It wasn't particularly spicy. The pasta itself was not particularly high quality. It was just dry boxed pasta. And the sauce, I just gotta say, the sauce was runny, not thick, pretty disappointing for a signature dish. And lastly, I gotta say, that mushroom pasta just flat out disappointing, flat out not good, just a really weak dish overall. The ups were good, but the downs were quite disappointing. So I gotta say overall, this was an average Italian restaurant, maybe a little bit above average if we wanna give it a bump due to the mozzarella. But even if we're generous with our rating, the food was all really overpriced. Like everything was really overpriced. The meatballs, despite being as good as they were, definitely not worth $27. And once again, the crazy hype associated with this restaurant totally overhyped. This is not a restaurant that you should have to reserve a month in advance, or in my case, you shouldn't have to try six months in a row to go to this restaurant, basically begging for a table. It just really was not worth it. So I just gotta say, in my opinion, this restaurant really overhyped to me, overpriced as well, and yeah, really overrated, and probably one of the most overrated restaurants I've been to in New York so far. But anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you've been to Carbone before and you disagree with my opinion, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments because great minds eat alike. I gotta get going now, so if you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. I'm looking forward to exploring lots of restaurants with you guys. Famous, under the radar, hyped up, under hyped, any kind. So until next time, I'll see you later.